Good evening, everybody, and welcome. This is our day three of Airgun, the Airgun Expo. Round table wrap up brought to you by Airguns of Arizona. In fact, let's go through our sponsors really quickly here. We want to thank Gateway to Airguns. We want to thank Airguns of Arizona. We want to thank Predator Pellets. Yeah, that's right. And we've even got a hawk in the house. Woo! But he can't talk yet. We've muted his mic. Uh, no, he's going to be on a little bit later. We're going to have Umrex coming up uh, in our next segment. But before we get to all of that, let's talk a little bit about today. Because today I have, you know, best laid plans and all. I had this week very meticulously dialed down to the minute. And that all went out the door today, along with everything else, with the 35 mile hour winds as they blew through the desert. <clears throat> Fortunately, uh, we were able to retask and we got knocked out all of our studio segments today. We just wolfed down dinner with a few minutes and got our butts back up here yes, we to did. do this. And so I'm pretty excited that we got that much out of the way because that sets us up for two days of just straight range time. And we've been having some really great fun with our air guns guys i'm gonna open it up <laughs> what did you guys like about today what are you looking forward to shooting over the next couple days uh just what do you guys think of everything so far open it up to you guys well rick i find that um <laughs> not <laughs> the swa uh even though i shot it i'm gonna shoot it again um with the hawk on it <laughs> and uh, i was cued and um uh i like the raptor i've shot the, you know i've you know been around and i'm um, shooting them they're nice and i want to shoot the hammer just because i haven't done it yet oh yeah so i can do a comparison between the hammer and the swa i'm sorry it has to be done has to be done i think you should do that yeah. I think you absolutely Everyone should makes perfect sense everything. That makes Not great you. sense i think you should do it yeah, I, I was glad to see that we got um, everything wrapped up, probably, I would say, two days of work wrapped up in one day. Actually, we did three <clears throat> days of studio sets in one day. So yeah, it was, it was it was busy today. We got a lot done. Um, I think um, the weather was horrible this morning and last night. Uh, it was... I mean, there was nothing you could do about it. I mean, nothing could be done outside today. It was just horrendous. But sandstorms and 35 mile an hour winds, uh, constant 20 mile an hour winds at the lowest point. Um, so it was nice to see that we uh, could reschedule things and move things around. Um, and then, and when you do anything live like we're doing right now, you're going to run into, you know, situations whether it be YouTube or, or, or the weather or what have you. And then you just got to work your way around it and, and move on. So that's what we did. And I feel like we accomplished a lot today in the studio events, getting all, all that stuff done. So um, tomorrow and the next day should be really fun for everyone because we're just going to do a lot of shooting and be outside and enjoy uh, a bunch of new products and uh, showcase some stuff that uh has, has yet to be seen by the public so it's cool. gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be an excellent uh, last two days and i'm going to echo and <laughs> bounce off of what he said glad to have that indoor stuff done just chit chatting and talking about the stuff good information if you're not aware of some of the stuff on the products mm -hmm. bring out the highlights but that's behind us. Now we get to go outside and play. Yeah. I did after the, uh, the American Air Arms Evol segment. I finally got to shoot that Evol 30 I put on the van a couple of weeks ago. Right. Let's see what it's all about, and, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. 100 yards, no problem yeah. every time. Yeah, it's a great gun. So we'll shoot that a little more tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll shoot both the Red Wolves I have, there you go. the there you Wolverine go. R if you want to. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we're going to play around with some big fours too. I yeah. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, I think what we've got going on is if we have a little bit of windy stuff, which we may have in the morning, we're just going to pull out the big boards because yeah, it we'll doesn't matter. Through it. We're yeah, not going to yeah. be, we're not talking 30 mile an hour winds. We may have 10 to 15 mile an hour winds, but and it's supposed to calm down later in the day tomorrow. And then Friday is supposed to be five to 10. So the ultra precision stuff that we want, maybe want to put on paper, mm -hmm. we'll probably shoot Friday. We have a bunch of companies you guys haven't even hear, heard from yet. Uh, and we've got those lined up 
Uh, fortunately, they were already scheduled for Thursday and Friday, so we're going to be able to pull these guys up. And and some of the stuff you saw in the studio today, we're going to be taking out and shooting. So uh, just Correct. some really cool stuff coming up. I'm very, very excited. You guys can join us live. And I want to encourage anybody, whether you're watching now or whether you watch uh, tomorrow live, throw out your questions. If you have a question about something you want to jump in, that we want this to be interactive. I mean, we're not... Uh, we didn't have shot show this year, didn't have yeah. these big groups and all this other stuff. You know, part of the cool thing about that is you get to ask questions of the people that actually make the guns or distribute the guns or deal with the products and accessories and whatever. Uh, you're going to have those on camera right there. You ask them your questions to so make use of that. And, uh, and you're going to have a lot of very knowledgeable people that are in the field <clears throat> that do this for a living. So, you know, if you have some technical questions or um, things that you can't find the answers to, um, online somewhere hey it's this perfect time for uh to get those questions answered so go ahead and chime in during our live segments tomorrow and uh you're probably going to get the answer uh, that what, you're, you're seeking what do you think angie i was hoping you're going to ask me yeah of course <laughs> i gotta get down there to angie what do you think well i did a lot of studio segments today and i um I love big boar, so I'm kind of glad there's going to be a little bit of a win tomorrow so we can get to that as fast as possible. But I mean, talking about the products is good, but you really, really, really get to know them when you go out there and shoot them. Yeah, that's so sure. I'm looking forward to getting to know some more of the products. Yeah, you were quite um, busy uh, today, weren't you? You had quite a few studios. It was slots. fun, though. It was yeah. fun because I mean, Rick knows a lot about the different products, a lot, a lot more than I do. So I'm really learning. And then to get to go out tomorrow and Friday and put into practice what I learned. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I mean, some yeah. of the things we'll be shooting tomorrow. I mean, obviously, like Larry said, we'll have the Red Wolves. Uh, I mean, maybe we could bring out that Delta Wolf. A little yeah. Bit, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we got the Evil. <laughs> we've got uh, the Wolverine. We've got the Bush Buck. We've got his whole van's here. I mean, I want to shoot the Bush Buck. I think what we need to do is we need to send Larry on a on an errand to town in my truck, and I'll just keep take care of his truck and then we'll just shoot everything yeah, um, but larry wants to shoot too yeah he does uh so i think mm -hmm. there's just so many things and i know that um travis uh did the stuff today with utah air guns we got two of their guns we got a gun from cattleman here so we've got a lot of stuff we're gonna shoot the jshaw raptor we were tagging 100 yards with that it seems like now, here's a good question. Let me let me ask you guys this uh, on a topical discussion. When I started and was buying brake barrels at the hundred dollar price point, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I was really excited to hit a milk jug at seventy five yards. I mean, that just tickled me silly. Um, nowadays, and I would never think of trying to group a, a, a brake barrel at fifty yards, or I mean, twenty yards was like amazing. Um, but today, it seems like the quality, the results of what we're getting out of guns that are very affordable, you got like 50-yard minimums. If you're not grouping an inch at 50, even in a $200 gun, you ain't making the cut. And now I'm thinking uh, yeah. <laughs> we're at 100 yards and we're hitting Larry's little quadrant. I'm going to buy, I don't know how many of those little quadrant targets. Those are stinking awesome because it gives you instant feedback on my left and my right and i hit the center right. i love that thing and i don't have to go run down and change paper um that thing is amazing i'm going to be using your word a lot it's amazing you'll hear joe say that a lot it's all right it's pretty um amazing. <laughs> but what do you guys think about the expectations of air guns now versus say 10 10 years ago yeah it's definitely not what it was 10 years ago i mean you can grab anything now and it seems like it all shoots like everything should shoot i mean it's it's freaking amazing but <laughs> um especially with pcps they've really come a long way i mean the technology involved with pcps i mean you know yeah. larry knows especially i mean being with um air guns of arizona they see a lot of highly advanced air rifles come through and the barrels we're using now are just freaking awesome <laughs> yeah i say the um the worst shooting pcp nowadays is probably 10 times better than the best shooting gun 10 years ago you're right um and then you take the best shooting pcps um today and i i think people if you would have went back in time 10 years ago and had them shoot it they, their <laughs> mind couldn't even wrap around sorcery yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> what what has happened in in the last 10 years especially the last three years the last three years, I think, has just been it's been it yeah. has catapulted so far forward and things have well, gotten um, 
really sophisticated really quickly and right. uh, and the competition and what happens is you get really strong competition between competing um platforms and that really makes them want to jump their game up and that's how things get better like race car driving drag racing running anything right. anytime you have good competition it brings out better um for us one of the things we've seen is the manufacturers of day state and brocock are listening yeah and not that, only are they listening a lot they're implementing what we're giving them yeah. and we're gathering up information from all over the U.S., all of our customers, taking those best ideas, passing them on to their engineering staff and management, and then they're actually implementing and making changes that make a difference for the shooter. Right. Well, yeah. What do you think, Angie? Well, I think there's an expansion of, um, I mean, there's so many more different, I feel for the consumer sometimes, because there's so many different types of air guns. Right. And how do you know which one's right for you? And I, that's one reason why I think this. You go to Gateway of Air Guns, ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this right here, the Air Gun Expo, is a perfect way to show people the different air guns, what they do, how they perform. Yeah, that's a great point, Angie. And you couldn't really get that anywhere else. But, you know, SHOT Show isn't going to give you that. They're just showing you product. And you're yeah. not really getting to see well, at Range Day, there's only a couple. How they shoot or what they sound like or get anyone's opinion that's not part of the sales team that's selling the, the unit. So I think we have a pretty strong up on uh, SHOT Show in, in that respect. And um, I think it'll grow from here and we'll see this uh, Air Gun Expo probably well, really expand. It's not even just air guns. I mean, we have Hawk Optics. Yeah, I was, yeah. was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Accessories. I'm talking the whole expo. Yeah. yeah. But accessories like Hawk Optics. But see what they're doing now. It's amazing. And, you yeah. know, even ammo has come a long way. And oh, yeah. look, how, look, look, look how we're filling our PCPs now. We're not pumping anymore. Yeah, going and getting yeah. our scuba tanks filled. We're using SCBA tanks. And um, a lot oh, of people have on, on that On that little <laughs> front there, just a little, tip, just a little thing. Um, I will be getting, uh, speaking for Air Good Pro Shop, uh, some compressors from JTS shortly. Just, just let you guys know that been wanting that compressor. It'll be in, in a couple of days. Just, That's good. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> it's www.airgunproject.com. All right. <laughs> Shameless plug. It's, yeah, it's my range. Was, hey. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, it's it's becoming easier and easier to become a, a shooter because there's more and more products available. There's more and more choices that are available. Um, and if you're not really sure of what you want to buy and just, you know, call up a sales team like at Air Guns of Arizona and tell them what you're trying to do, you know, what your goals are. And they'll, right. they'll fit you into a gun and scope and what you need, you know. So let's say you're squirrel hunter. They're going to find you, you know, the right gun, you know, and the right ammo and the right <coughs> scope or your coyote hunting. They're going to do the same thing. The right ammo the right so I, gun, the right scope that's, that's their job yep yeah so i think that you know going getting back to the original question was yeah things have changed <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the fact that um the expectations are uh, i mean they're really when i was excited about hitting a milk jug at, at 75 yards now i'm really expecting to hit a soda pop can at 100 every time i pull the trigger and yeah. there are guns at the three and four hundred dollar price well, point cedric, that could do it what cedric so because he shoots how far 600 yards i don't know yeah but that's because of me oh. <laughs> <laughs> no cedric is he's a good he's cedric comes from a powder burner um background though too so he's he's got a lot of good stuff he's he's a plethora of information and he 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 knows a lot and with me you know him doing those exotic calibers and me doing exotic you know following him basically and doing exotic calibers you know it, it's not something for everyone to do because then you're casting your own slugs and a lot of people don't want to do that and it's 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 a whole new world i mean i his 172 and my 172 will do 400 plus yards easy. Mm. That's crazy. That is crazy. What kind of velocity are you getting out of that? Um, right now, the 26, 24 grainers, uh, from 31 down to 23, I get 26 shots, and my average is about uh, 10, 10, 1,010. 
do you see with slugs, do you see air guns that are able to push them supersonic and have any tr- flight time at supersonic in reality? Yeah, I mean, because when I'm shooting that particular round, say at even 200 yards, it's getting out there. It's quick, but, you know, it's still, it's not powder burner quick. And you, you can, you, you well, he, the bit. reason I was asking that is because if you're a hunter, um, the reason is I have this question a lot. It's a good one for the panel, I think, to look at. So we're going to talk big bore, shoot some big bores here. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I have people ask me a lot of times, I want to shoot, I want to hunt at 100 yards with my big bore. Well, you, you've got flight time to consider. It's right. not accuracy and energy, it's flight time because that fast the animals move and you, exactly. you've, you've got a four inch kill zone they're gone man you're going to tag them in the hip especially with big game because you know deer get smart during hunting season they everything they hear at that point is i gotta run prairie dogs which i, I hunt primarily they stand there and like what whack okay done <laughs> next yeah so, and but you get into big boar you get the long range so the question i the reason i was asking is that one of the reasons rifle shots can be taken at 400 yards is the bullet's still supersonic. They yeah. ain't heard the shot yet. Yeah. So when do you see, or do you ever see air guns hitting that stride where you're pushing a reasonably decent sized projectile mm-hmm. at velocities that gets you, tra- you know, supersonic for right. a period of time before it then transitions back down? Well, you're, you're talking physics now. I am. <clears throat> so we're going to have to go through a little bit of Travis class now. Oh, oh my gosh. I am going to be sorry <laughs> I asked this question. Rick. <laughs> sorry, everybody. I apologize. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll dummy it down a little bit, Rick. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Can you dumb it way down for me, yeah, please? Okay. Um, the, the, the fact is this. Um, when you start pushing any um, projectile past supersonic, unless it's going way, way past supersonic, the drag is actually higher than if it's subsonic. And because we can't go 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 feet per second out of an air rifle, and, and, those, and those numbers are not achievable really with air um, because you can only compress air so far uh, before the molecules no longer um, have any more effect. Um, they're just too tightly packed together. Okay. Okay, so when you start shooting let's say a slug of any sort pass supersonic and you can put this in stray lock or chair gun and you'll see that it'll actually have more drop in it at a hundred yards than that same round going subsonic really because it doesn't have to make the transition over and then back down yeah well it it's the drag and to overcome the drag you need more speed actually to keep to keep it up well that's good to know because i have people ask me that question i had a comment and, and, and we, I, I actually understand the the air size of the molecule there's a there's a physical physics yeah, there's limit. barriers that's why people go to helium that's why lighter, they go to helium and the mo- molecules are further apart yeah so um, you're able to do faster velocities with those but i do have correct. that question why don't you just shoot at this go that fast and then, because and, 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 believe me uh, if we could we probably would yeah and, and, <laughs> and, and it would have been and it would have been done by now i mean there's people a whole lot smarter than me that could figure this out. And they, we would have been shooting a thousand yards by now um, if, if we could regularly. But right. the fact is we're, we have um, physical uh, limitations with the use of air um, that we can't, you know, jump over. Um, so we, we work in this uh, realm of subsonic shooting, basically. And yes, you can shoot supersonic. You just can't shoot it a long way right? Because, okay. it, because it just slows so rapidly once it gets over the sonic barrier over Mach 1. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we play in our, in our, so goal. you want to get as close to it. You want to get right on the edge. If With, that's what you're trying to do, you want to get if it, you're trying uh, to go far I and, and depending at what elevation you're at, you know, it could be as low as a thousand fifty feet per second, you know, in a size, you know, in eleven hundreds feet per second before you're over that sound barrier. So um, if we can get the heavier, we can get the closest, closer to that to the barrier. Then the, the better more, off we are. The better off you are, and of course, the more energy you need to do that, also. Question. Okay, we have two questions here. Hand hand her the mic there, John. <clears throat> two questions. One is, 
Does anyone know when the Umarex gauntlet will be available? And the other is, will the new 177 slugs be allowed in field target? Those are two good questions. Yep, I know those that are great the questions. gauntlet's probably August. Right. And what about the field target question? This, you know what? Because so, Tyler brought that up too, because he was looking at doing that. If he can keep them, I guess, under a certain speed um, or a certain foot pounds, and I think they may allow it. The, the only problem with that, though, is um, slugs, slugs again, are spin stabilized and right. they need speed. Let's, let's so throw it over to the boss man field there. target, traditional American air gun field target, mm -hmm. AFTA. Still going to have to stay under that 20 foot pounds. Right. And so, in order to do that, that slug's going to be flying very slow. Very so, slow. now you need better range finding. It's already allowed in extreme field target. Mm -hmm. So, because those targets, can take up to 100, 150 foot pounds. So you can push that slug, but they put them in separate categories <laughs> because there's significant advantages to shooting slugs at distance in the wind versus a pellet. Absolutely true. So in extreme field target, it's already happening yeah. shooting slugs. They just have American two categories, field target, right? which is a totally different sport. I, I don't know. Well, uh, and we're back to that, you know, the limitations uh, of the dynamics of, of spin-oriented uh, objects like a, like a slug. If you can't spin it fast enough, it's not stable. So when you get to that, you know, 20 foot pound in barrier, it's going to be going very slow and spinning very slow. So it's really not an advantage over a drag stabilized uh, pellet um, at that point. So it wouldn't really be worth the effort. Is what I'm saying. It'd be. Uh, I, I want to try the the ten. Yeah, the air arms again. I'd the like tens. To I think. And, uh, and wait, I grabbed that. Well, hold on. I grab. I'm thinking beyond field target. Okay. I'm just thinking one seven seven slugs mm -hmm. and can I shoot them straight? Um, I had grabbed that Walther LGV. Ooh. That is that you know that may I mean that's a just a Springer and I would think. I would like to try the tens in that just to see how it, how they did. That would be interesting because that would be a slower velocity with a slower spin, and I'd be curious to see how it did. What were y'all getting with the air arms the other day? Uh, the, the thirteens we were getting twenty two, twenty three foot pounds, and the tens we were getting twenty twenty one foot twenty one foot pounds. Yeah, and the other one was closer so, to twenty four foot pounds. Yeah. So for field target, I have one gun that I shoot. 10 three fours with okay. conventional pellets 904 is the speed right so if you're looking at the 10 grain slug you're going to have to stay under about 910 i think would be the max for 20 foot pounds is that fast enough to spin the slug to get stability i i guess if you took a really high twist rate pellet like a one and six I'd have to do the math. I mean, I'd have to pull out and do some right. math, but you'd have to you'd have to really have a super high twist barrel to to spin it fast enough that that shorter range to uh, make it worthwhile. I just don't see how it would be more accurate than a pellet at those speeds and and, and staying under that uh, yeah. that barrier. So conventional field target remains to be seen. Yeah. Extreme field target. Yeah. It's already being done. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can, what, can, you, can you tell me? I, I hear you say it. Look, I don't compete because I'm chicken, right? <laughs> um, I, I, mean, I, I will goof <laughs> off at my range and pick on Joe, and we'll see who can shoot the SWA at 100 yards and hit the gong. Me. Um, After you watch me. We'll do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's beside. I mean, you know, I wasn't going to bring that up. But right. you uh, brought it up. It's yeah. Shh, shh. Um, you know, it, sometimes you can just be quiet. I'm just saying. <laughs> you, were, you were even there when he told me his secret. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, Angie, <laughs> what is extreme field target? <laughs> I, I, so, I, I don't know what it is. So, educate me, please. <laughs> extreme field target is something that, you know, we got started. It is targets that will take up to 150 foot pounds. So you could shoot them with a 22 and the distances and kill zone sizes or hit zones are larger. So they go from one inch, which is standard field target, but up to four inch heart shape. So they're irregular. 
And the distances are 20 yards to 100 yards. So you can take your gun that you buy to hunt squirrels with that shoots 30 foot pounds. Minimum is 28 to knock down a large target at 100 yards to have enough energy to do that. Mm -hmm. You can take that gun that you bought to hunt squirrel with and go out and shoot in a field target match if you want to. Now that sounds like fun. I mean, that brings a yeah, lot. See, more, I would that do brings that. A lot more people in into the realm of. And the, that was our goal because yeah. the majority of our customers are the people that like to plank and like to hunt and mm -hmm. pest, and so this gives them something that they can shoot at, and they don't have to have a pest. Is there a caliber restrictions? I've never been to the extreme, so I don't. I don't know much about it myself. No, it's just the. I mean, the energy level okay. is what limits. It. So I could What's bring the my max? 172 then and, and compete because it's 80 foot pounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But What's the max SWA. energy? Pardon me? What's the max energy? <laughs> max energy is somewhere between 100, 150. That's still being determined. The targets <laughs> that we sell and manufacture will take 150 foot pounds. And your max energy They're works. Right, they're oh, AR four hundred muscle steel. energy. What the? Yeah, it's at the muzzle. At the muzzle. Yeah, wow. measured at the muzzle. Wow, you could really uh, build a screamer. Yeah, a yeah. flat shooting screamer with that kind of uh, muzzle energy. We got a question. Where does someone that's just getting started in air gunning learn to shoot more accurately? Practice. Well, I would say Gateway Air Guns is a great place, along with the other forms that are out there, and get help from other people. Um, get in touch with other air gunners that are that li like to do the same thing you do and whether it's obviously i'm going to say gateway to air guns uh, over and over and over and over um, but there are other places too that you can go and reach out to there's tons of excuse me uh, uh, yeah there are tons of youtube channels as well that will give you um, some help and advice i mean air gun webs are great when there's other Backyard shooting. Uh, we Backyard have shooting. There's, yes, thank you, Angie. Uh, and there's <laughs> other places that have obviously uh, have tons of material to help you do that. And we have books that That's we right. sell, right. Uh, right. but it's a lot more fun to go into the field. Yeah. And I think like what you're talking and about too, Larry, is if you uh, seek out your local field target group and just go hang out with those guys. And even if you're not shooting, just go hang out, watch them, ask some questions. They're really a bunch of nice guys um that have a lot of knowledge and and know how to shoot and shoot well so if if you're looking to become a better shooter an accurate shooter just go you, i mean there's field target groups everywhere bench rest bench rest if you want to shoot off hand yeah. 10 meter yeah there's all kinds of opportunities yeah well, it, and a lot of clubs they're not hard to find they're well, the extreme bench find. rest are there like holders where you have to deal lay down stand up sit what what are the restrictions there are? sometimes are uh force positions kneeling offhand or standing okay and the same way with the traditional field target you know most major competitions require a certain number of shots to be force positions kneeling or standing sure. and Just of course you can shoot the whole course standing if you want Wow. <laughs> Get right on that. Yeah. <laughs> Another question. I have an Evanex 30 cal sniper two with a carbon fiber bottle. Really? Is that model older than the one that you sell on your website? Yes. Uh, that, well, unless you bought it from someplace that I'm not aware of, but I believe uh, Evanex is revamping the X2. It'll be coming out. The next few months, we'll have some new ones. Now, if you just bought it from somebody yesterday uh, out of out of the country, I don't know what Mr. Lee may be doing with that. But as far as what's available here, um, there is going to be a new X2 variant um, that has some internal changes as well as trigger geometry changes, a hardened valve stem, uh, things to make the gun more reliable over time. Um, so you may have an older model. Another question. In the 22 cal... I don't know which gun. Um, HP slug, what's the minimum velocity for it to open for maximum expansion or energy oh, transfer? With slugs, a lot of people think slugs are going to open up regardless of what they hit. If you hit a squirrel and its chest cavity 
you might see some expansion, you're not going to see full expansions. And there's not enough, there's not enough density there to open up the slug. Now, if you hit something like a, say a woodchuck in the, in, in the, in the rear. Okay. And there's a lot of meat there. You'll, you'd see expansion there, but um, a lot of times, like when Rick is doing ballistics testing, a lot of people just don't seem to realize he's shooting ballistic gel. It's made to make projectiles open up that, right. are, that are to perform that way. So, I mean, as a lot of times I, I never see expansion, but I get the same results. Well, I'll tell you this in that, in the gel, we did a whole series on small bore, um, normal powered ballistics. It was, I think the previous series and we right. went through a bunch of stuff and there was minimal expansion in the gel. So if you want to like expansion, expansion, first of all, you need to make sure you're using a softer lead. So JSP's alloy is a little softer it's than say H&N. Soft, yeah. So H&N has a harder hitting. It's, it, it's going to give you more penetration before expansion where, f correct me if I'm wrong here, mm. But where JSB, uh, like the polymags or something, may give you more expansion with a little less penetration. Yes. So it all depends on the uh, on the metallurgy and the pellet. Um, obviously, you hit something faster that's dense, you're going to get more expansion. Uh, where if it's limping along, even if it's dense, it's not going to expand. It's so varied, depending on your gun, depending on the game where distance. you hit it, distance, um, velocity, density. All, all there's too many variables. I would say if you want expansion, shoot gel. Works great. And always remember that shot placement is the key. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Um, I don't know if you answered this already. What calibers are allowed in extreme field? Yeah, we answered that. It's just a foot pound limit typically set by the uh, match director. Okay. But up to 150 foot pounds for the targets that we sell. Yeah, and then I think this was in response to the, where do you go to learn more about shooting if you're a beginner? But Benjamin Spencer said, we have loaner guns. So I'm guessing that there yep. are other programs out there or places out there where you can go and test guns or shoot things, shops, like you were talking about. Um, Utah, Utah air, guns. air guns. Yeah, New well, England air guns. Too. Ben Spencer is a member of the club that I'm a member of. He's one of our uh, Wolfpack team members. And Ben bought a gun that someone can shoot traditional field target with. Oh, Most okay. every field target shooter brings an extra gun. And if you show up to shoot and want to shoot, we'll loan you the gun. Or after the match, you can shoot our gun to try different things. Cool. I have found the air gunning community to be extremely open. I mean, <clears throat> there are some of us that have opinions <laughs> And we like to voice them, but in general, what? <laughs> in general, I have found the air gunning community to be very accommodating and also desirous of helping people learn about the sport they love. So, I mean, get up. Sorry. <laughs> Except Joe. Um, <clears throat> I'm very accommodating to the air gunner. You are. I don't understand what, what's the what's the snickering for. <laughs> yeah, he's very accommodating. He shot everything we've offered to let him shoot. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. It's more than once. Um, that's good. But I would say just ask for help. Exactly. I had a vision or dream. I had a dream one time <laughs> of a. It was, awesome it was. It was a gun program. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he's going. We're just gonna let him go away. Just Jonah, let him go. <laughs> come back. Stop laughing, John. <laughs> of a of a program much like Netflix, where you have all of all of these guns. People like buy it, and they would be able to exchange guns in and out. Uh, they, you know, get you get to so two guns. Up guns. I know, I know. <laughs> but I was thinking Travis then would be Travis. Travis would be the person to fix them all. Oh no, they come back. I don't Jeez. fix guns anymore. I know that's that. impractical, but it well, would be kind of cool. I can tell you that if you happen to be in Gilbert, Arizona, stop by Air Guns of Arizona. We have a range right there in the front. Mm -hmm. Any gun we sell, 
We'll set you up so that you can try it out. That's the way to do it. That yeah. is the way right there to do it. And if you're brave enough to drive out to my range, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can do the same thing. But you're going to need to be brave. And bring a canteen in case you get lost. And bring, sp- and bring spare <laughs> tires. <break> down. <laughs> yeah, bring a big truck. Right. Big truck. And don't no, bring and a Ford. And know where you're going. <laughs> and don't bring a Ford. Wow. <laughs> There's actually... Uh, go on the internet you can find all sorts of places where you can go test the guns before you buy it so yeah. there's probably yeah. one close to you you just gotta look most of our dealers have ranges yeah uh we had one here in texas um that he would close all the doors down the hallway of this little bitty <laughs> shop he had it was like eight yards he took one of the doors and put it as a backstop and people, he'd let people shoot the guns. Sweet. So most Only air gun dealers it. will do that. Okay. Well, we need to be, uh, we need to be looking at time. We're going to have to get reset for another one, but we can take a few more questions. Um, Benjamin also said at Phoenix Rod and Gun Club Extreme have loaner guns. Um, yes, you can they do. Show up and shoot. We'll put you with an experienced shooter. So so there's lots of avenues out there for you. Basically, yep. that's what it boils down to. You know, get on the internet, find someone near you and seek them out, whether it's a club or or a place uh, like Air Guns of Arizona, um, where you can um <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> uh, this is Joe's it, it Joe's was, out. It was a okay. long day. It's Annihilator. been a very long day. It was. Annihilator Air Guns would like to know, is there anyone prettier than Joe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. God. You know what? I know Annihilator, and I know where you live. And, <laughs> and I think what he's saying is the answer is no. <laughs> Man, where did I meet these people at? <laughs> I was just saying how great air gunners are to hang out with. Hey, John, are you guys hiring a hawk? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you must make an impression. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what kind. Oh, God. So I got a question for you guys. Sure. All right. And Go uh, so we still got all you up here. How did y'all get into air gunning? Great you know, question. I covered this in the last couple of days. And was- like, let's just do it where each person gets a minute. Okay. Yeah, because this, yeah, this could take a long. I'll time. go. I'll Deep go breath, first. One I'll go first. <gasps> I wanted to shoot, and where I used to live, I could go down the range. It was about twenty minutes away. I moved out the country, thought I could shoot my firearms. Found out I couldn't, so I said, "Well, it's now an hour and a half to the range," and I found that oh wow, there's these thing called air guns that are very different than I grew up with. These are awesome, and I can shoot in my backyard, and that's how I started. Six. Yep, 2006. Um, 2010, I bought my kids a couple of air rifles. I hadn't shot them in a while. I started shooting them. I started researching brake barrels and started researching how expensive they could get. And I said, I'd never buy anything expensive. Saw PCP, said, I'm never spending $500 for a PCP. <laughs> I didn't for my first one, but I did for my last, second one. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, I, I remember my Discovery, my Sumatra, and my Talon P. I don't know what the hell happened after that. <laughs> One day I turned around, I had air guns. I was like, wow, what are these? So that's how I got stuck into it. 2007, I was involved in a major car accident and I had to get neck, back and knee surgery. So I was laid up at home, um, you know, in a wheelchair board. And so I bought a air rifle to uh, shoot uh, ground squirrels off the deck of my house. And that's how it started. Just well, recouping. back in the 1960s, <laughs> when you all at were, Christmas, yeah. I got when a you got your red rod. Daisy. 18, <laughs> uh, I got a Daisy 1894 BB gun, and my job on the farm was to eliminate all the sparrows in the calf barn, so that they didn't do things to our farm equipment. But then I've also known Robert. Buchanan, who is co-owner of Air Guns of Arizona since 1981. And about 1995, I believe it was, he asked me if I wanted to help him form an air gun club. And so we formed Air Guns, Air Gunners of Arizona, started out with a Slavia 631. Mm -hmm. I got two targets out of 24 in that match. (laughs) And one of them they gave me. (laughs) <laughs> because it wouldn't knock it over and it's just grown from there you know i always say i retired and got my dream job 
because I retired from major aircraft manufacturer. And I said, I want to be off a month. Robert called me almost a month of the day <laughs> and said, Hey, I've got a job. I just haven't had the right person. Are you interested? And we had breakfast the next day and I went to their staff meeting at noon. That That's day. cool. Went That's very work. cool. It's nice when that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. How about you, Angie? Well, you know my story. Rick. I'm Rick. I do. <laughs> so I actually, I have shot air guns before my sons had some. And um, in 2017, my husband said, I'm retiring and you need to find a job. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I said, I like, I like him already. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I don't want to miss hunting. It's good because it's going to probably be on the weekends and it's going to be on the days that we hunt. This is a terrible idea. But no, I did pray about it and I did not say anything to anybody else, but Rick approached me and he says, I know you like the outdoors. You like shooting things. You want to try out checking out some air guns, doing some reviews and see how it goes. And I absolutely love it. I don't call it my job. I call it my jobby because it's a hobby. It's so much fun. I love, there is work. I mean, there is work. It's not just like, oh, this is so fun all the time. The editing part of it. It's not so much fun all the time, but I really love what I do. I love shooting air guns and I love meeting other air gunners and it is a great community of people. It really is. It, it really is. Yeah. We have another question. Um, does air guns of Arizona know if American air arms is going to produce an Evol 30 HPS? HPS. Not sure what an HPS is. Uh, the Evol that we evaluated today uh, is in 30 caliber and it shoots up to 90 foot pounds yeah. and it'll shoot darn close to a one inch group at 100 yards, no problem. Maybe it's fantastic trigger, eight to 10 ounce trigger. I and when Tom builds something, who you know, he's American Air Arms, it's high quality, it's going to last. And it's going to be top quality. So I think they're already there, but I don't know about the HPS part. Maybe it means high power shooter or high power yes, system or high power yeah, something. Yeah, it's already high. It's already yeah, high it's power. And it's, a car, and it's a carbine and it's 90 yeah. foot pounds. And it will shoot slugs or yeah. high will. power slug. Yeah. High power slug. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it already shoots. Yeah, slugs. it's give it a try. Yeah. Take right, some of these fine JSB slugs Ooh. and put it in. The Ooh, Evolve. Well, I don't have 30 caliber slugs. What yet. Not yet. 30 no. caliber slugs oh, no. I don't have 30 caliber slugs yet. You, you killed me. Well, that you're, you're, you're not, that you're not <laughs> telling Joe us. Joe was okay. telling me to have next week, but I'm just saying. Yeah, Man, they're getting you, their, their, their shipping. You know, I, I'm not Frankenstein's monster, and I don't want the <laughs> town folks chasing me down. <laughs> no, oh he did gosh. not say anything. Jay, he didn't say anything about the 30 cal slugs or anything. No. In all seriousness, <clears throat> I'm sure you guys are working on some pretty cool stuff. I'm looking forward to it when it I, comes I out. I do have something cool that, yeah, is, is cool. Spit it out. <laughs> there you, you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We need to last question. This is our last this question. This isn't a question. I thought this would be a good way to go out, though. Okay. Backroads Air Gunning says, to quote Rick, it's a great time to be an air gunner. I Absolutely. like it. Oh, that was cool. Yep. Yes, All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're done. We're going to reset. In 15 minutes, we're going to have uh, Umrex up with us. We're going to have Mark and Aiden are going to call in. Hopefully they've got all their connections ready, but we're going to have these guys up. So be ready to throw questions their way and give them a really hard time. Uh, and uh, ask them when, when the gauntlet two is going to be available. We want to ask them at least a dozen times so that they, uh, they have nothing else to talk about. Thing up, Joe. Yeah. Anyway, we leave that a hammer thing alone. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. We thank uh, all of our sponsors: um, Hawk, that's here, Brent Pellets, Gateway Air Guns, and of course, Air Guns of Arizona, Air Guns of Arizona. Ooh, got too many names. Uh, and you guys for watching, because without you guys watching, <laughs> we wouldn't be here. Um, so thank you all very much. Be back in about fifteen minutes. All right.